Welcome to the Fire and Earth Podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Groover. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Welcome to another episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason Mefford. And I am Kathy Groover. And if you've seen any of our past shows where we talked to Mike Mandel or where Jason and I have discussed ego states, we're going to do a little deeper dive today. So we're going to talk specifically about one type of ego state, which is our manager ego state. And the reason I wanted to start with this one is because we all have that one. It's the one that allows us to put our pants on in the morning, gets us to work, gets us organized, remembers what we need at the grocery store, that kind of thing. So it's the easiest one and typically like the least threatening, the least scary to dive into. So I thought we would talk about our managers today and uh, acquaint you all with that concept. Yeah. And so maybe for, you know, if, if, if this happens to be the first episode or maybe if they miss some of them, let's just, let's just give people a little thumbnail of what's an ego state, right? Because again, I'm sure that all of you sitting there have been, you know, you kind of feel like oh, I'm kind of acting a little different than I normally do. And then all of a sudden in a different situation, you're kind of a different, it's almost like you're a different person a little bit. Right. So Kathy, yeah. that, that's, that's kind of like the generic thing, but let's, let's yeah. get, give a, give a little better, more, more, more technical, real, what, what is an ego state? So people can kind of understand that. Yeah, so this is, it, it's, it's known by a lot of different names. So we've got internal family systems, we've got parts work, we've got resource state therapy, we've got ego state therapy, so or ego state theory. So depending on maybe what your background is, a lot of people who have studied psychology or who have done psychological counseling understand internal family systems. And the idea of that is that basically we have all these different characters who make up us. So you're right, we sometimes feel like we're a different person, right? We act differently at the bar with the guys during the football game than we do at the board meeting or hopefully than we do at the daycare center than we do with our spouse than we do on vacation you know and i've done this workshop where i've had guys go oh geez i thought i just had like a work me and a home me or sports me and a you know play with the kids me and i said yeah you absolutely do so we can have up to 100 or 150 ego states there's normally 10 or 15 that we see most often, and they fall into these really specific categories, one of which is manager. And like I said before, we can all recognize that one. You know, that's the one that gets us to work. That's the one that keeps us organized. Uh, these are not psychological constructs. These are hardwired into the brain. They communicate directly with the prefrontal cortex, and they do have different personalities. Sometimes they have different genders and ages. So we all have a scared little kid. We all have one that maybe can bring up shame. We have a striving part. We have a biological part part that keeps us eating, drinking, sleeping, reproducing. Uh, we have a comic part. You know, we all have a little gesture character. And I like to use, you know, if you've ever seen Friends, and I think everybody by this point on the, in the universe has seen Friends, Chandler Bang was the jester, right? His go-to thing was humor. Uh, that was his way of adapting. So these, all these were formed in childhood to protect us, to allow us to adapt, to allow us to move forward. So, you know, I also like to look at... Um, breakfast club you know mm -hmm. all of those if you look at the the library as us as one person and you look at all those different characters as those six kids at any given time each one stepped forward with their very specific personality type and kind of led the charge right they took over that's what happens with ego states one is in charge at a time we switch back and forth through them so quickly uh, we've all probably had our anger triggered and we kind of go geez why did i react that strongly well, it triggered an ego state that we weren't ready for. So um, yeah, I thought we'd talk specifically about managers today. Yeah, because that's, a, like you said, it's an important one. You know, it helps us put our pants on in the morning. So if you're walking around <laughs> without pants on today, then your manager didn't show up. <laughs> <Gotta laughs> we check. all got to check, right? Then your manager probably didn't show up. So, so you know, when we talk about how to get to know your, your manager, it's how to get to know kind of this internal manager ego state. Yep. Um, is, is, is really what we're talking about. Not, not getting to know your manager at work better, but, but your, 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 your internal manager at work, right? Yeah, your, exactly. Yourself, getting to know yourself better. Well, and you raise a really good point. Um, you're not going to walk into a brand new organization, whole hands on deck kind of thing and meet 15 people and not know what they do and start handing out tasks because you might accidentally tell the CEO to make copies and the tech guy to start driving the deliveries. And, you know, the secretary, she's now doing computer engineering. It's like, you want to know who these people are before you start handing them tasks. And this is why one of the first things I do when I'm working with my coaching clients on ego states is 
let's get to know these who these parts of you are so that you can call up the right one for the right task and there's been a couple different times in my life where i have had to call on capricorn to that's my manager who you'll meet in a second um to help me get through the situation at hand what one of which was when i was getting audited by the irs i knew i couldn't let my vulnerable self i couldn't be scared i couldn't be too funny because the irs doesn't like that um so i pulled up capricorn and she walked in and kicked ass um, same thing when I went to do my last TEDx talk and I found out in the car on the way to LA that my dad had died. And I wanted to go into grief, loneliness, abandonment, guilt, you know, all these things that I needed to feel, but I had to go do a really important talk. And so I stayed in my manager state, cold, emotionless. I got through it. And the second I walked off stage, I completely collapsed into a heap of tears, you know, but I was able to hold that manager state to get me through what I needed to do. So, well, and be, and because, you know, again, I mean, I've, I, I see this just to try to relate it to hopefully, so people kind of understand more what we're talking about, right, is, is there, there's certain times like that, right, where I might be sitting here at my desk, and I don't feel like doing something, right, because that's, I'm in an ego state that's not in the right mm -hmm. state of mind, okay, mm -hmm. there's a reason we say that as yep. well, right, um, to be able to accomplish the task at hand. And so the idea is, okay, you know, whatever other ego state that Jason is in at the time doesn't want to do this. Well, yep. I'm, I'm sorry, you know, Jester or what, whatever other one, I need the manager to show up for five minutes or 15 minutes so yep. I can get the shit done. Right. That's what we're Absolutely. talking about and, and, and being able to know how to do that and how to tap into that when you need to tap into it. Instead Absolutely. of just sitting there and going, uh, not having anything get done. Yeah. That's you on the couch. You're like, I don't want to do anything. I don't uh -huh. now this part of you needs attention too. You have to let yourself have that downtime, but when it's been days of this, <laughs> and you're not getting any of your work done. <laughs> it might be time to call on the manager. Right? So the cards that I'm using, and we've talked about these, but these are called interactive cards. I am not affiliated with these. I get no money for talking about them. I just think they're amazing. And this was based on a book that um, Richard Schwartz work called internal family systems therapy. And the artwork is incredible. I'm, Actually, having trouble finding the name of the woman that did the artwork, but she also did the artwork, artwork in his book. And I love these cards as a resource because I actually sent my clients down. There's like 70 cards, no words on them, just images. And I have my clients like flip through the cards and say, what do you relate to? And it's interesting because that going back to that card, some people relate to the mom. Some people relate to the kid on the couch. You know, it's like, oh, I feel like I'm constantly bugging my spouse because da 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 da, and they feel like that nagging mom, that nagging parent, right? So everybody gets something different out of the cards. So I love to use my manager as an example. So let me introduce you to Capricorn. So thank God I have Capricorn, right? She's gotten me through my PhD. She's allowed me to run my business. She's organized. She keeps me on task with my PowerPoint. She keeps speaking gigs coming in. She organizes everything so that I can coach. She's great. She's allowed me to achieve all these things. She's organized. She's a great communicator, a great leader, uh, very ambitious, that type of stuff. Now, when Capricorn gets carried away, <laughs> She's very type A, she's controlling, she's bossy, she's judgmental, she's a workaholic, she's emotionless, um, she gets very uh, naggy and very mm -hmm. like just barking orders at people and that doesn't work. And I can't bring this home from work, right? This is not a good relationship person. This is a good boss, um, but not great for interpersonal and romantic relationships. So I have to temper that aspect of her and when i really started studying ego states and i asked well what why does she get like that what is her role her role is to protect me so i start to look back like when did capricorn show up and i realized that it i was pretty young i was bullied picked on beat up <clears throat> when i was in like grade school and middle school and that tended to happen during research re recess lunch and study hall when I was vault, when I wasn't busy, right? When there was time for kids to just wander around and pick on me. So I realized, well, if I eat lunch in the band room or take another class, if I don't take study hall, if I'm in another class, if at research recess, I hang out with the teachers, they can't get me. 
So Capricorn was born. And it was this shark thing of if you stop, you're vulnerable. If you keep achieving, they'll have to like you. If you get straight A's, you'll get more love from your parents. Because no matter how great our parents were, there was some level of conditional love. I mean, that's just, that's just humans, right? Get better grades, do a better dance recital, <laughs> smile more, you know, blah, blah, blah. So that's where my Capricorn came from. And again, thank her. You know, it's like, I am so grateful she's there. She's allowed me to have this amazing life that I do. And I have to balance her out. So when she gets out of control, I've got to bring in someone else to make sure that she doesn't completely drive the bus all the time. It's not healthy. It's not mm -hmm. healthy. So there's Capricorn. That's who she is. Well, and I want to, I want to just dig in on a little bit of, of what you did there, because you're, you're to, to break down some of the steps for people, right? So, so again, some things that Kathy has done with this alter ego state, okay, you probably heard of alter ego, right? So this is, again, what we're kind of talking about all these different alter mm -hmm. egos that are that make up the totality of us, right? So, so one thing she did, she gave the alter ego a name, yep. a gender, right, as well. And usually, again, as you're developing an alter ego, the more personalized, the more relatable that we can get to talking about this other part of us or, or communicating and interacting with this other part of us, the better it's going to be, right? Because yep. it's just like any other human relationship, right? That if, if you don't take time to understand who the other person is, get to know them, you know, it's hard. And so the more, the more concrete you can kind of make this alter ego, the better as well, right? Because yeah. I'm sure some of you are like, why is she talking about Capricorn? I know she's a Capricorn, but why does she keep saying Capricorn? Because right. her alter ego manager is named Capricorn. Right. And to that point, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, yeah, name your parts. And the first thing I encourage people to do is pick your three that you are most familiar with. Typically, one's a manager, maybe one's a parent, one's a partner, one's, you know, whatever it is. Pick those three that you know are there and then give them the name. And this is so important because it's the name they want to be called. So I had a client sitting in my office and she said, Kathy, you know, I'm just stuck on the couch. All I want to do is drink wine and stare at Netflix, which is fine for a day, but I've been doing it for weeks and I'm not getting anything done. And I said, okay, well, what part of you is sitting on the couch drinking wine? And she said, lazy ass. And I went, oh, okay, uh, does she want to be called lazy ass? Or is your judge who doesn't like that part of you calling her lazy ass? And she goes, oh, yeah, she probably doesn't want to be called lazy ass. And I said, okay, well, what would she like to be called? And she closed her eyes and she sat in that for a second and she goes, it's 14 year old. It was this little kid the part of her 14 year old, 14 year old, this little kid part of herself that didn't want to escape. And we ended up working with that. It turned out it was there for a very good reason, as they all are. But, um, you know, we all have a different we all have a different manager. This just happens to be mine. Um, you know, maybe this is your this is your manager who is you know barking orders and up on a pedestal above everybody else. Maybe you have this really calm, it's hard with this light, this really calm, like include everybody manager. I, I have a client who this is what she uses for her manager, but her manager is a woman. So she put like a Bob hairstyle, she colored on the thing. <laughs> on she the put a little Bob haircut on the guy and calls it Bob, even though it's now a woman. You know, you know, maybe this is your manager who just like you know, fights for the underdog and saves the day. And, you know, it could be whatever it is for you, but yeah, name it. I happen to be a Capricorn and I'm very Capricorn and she's very Capricorn. And in my house now we've made Capricorn a verb. <laughs> so I'm say, Capricorning that. <laughs> yeah. Hang on, hang on. I got a Capricorn for a minute and I'll get my stuff done and then I'll go, okay, I'm done Capricorning, you know, because it, it, sometimes we have to, I might have two more emails to do, or I might have to return that phone call, or I might have to look at my text. So we now joke and, you know, both my boyfriend and I were familiar with these. We talk about ego states. It's a great way to have a relationship because I can text him and go, my little kid ego state is really feeling neglected lately. I've been Capricorning way too much. And he'll go, okay. And so that night we broke up the Play-Doh and the, and we just played for an hour. You know, this is a great way to communicate with your partner because our ego states trigger other people's ego states and vice versa. We're getting carried away. So anyway, that's the manager. So what are its qualities, the good and the bad? I don't like to say bad, but you know what the shadow side, when it gets too big for its britches, what does it do? And then really ask, you know, what purpose does it serve for you? What is it protecting you from? Because often they're there to protect us from things. So that's a great way to start. 
Well, and so, so, you know, we've named it, we, we kind of, you know, again, you can use things like the cards to help you kind of visualize better, but how, how do you come to, to know your internal manager a little bit better too, right? Because again, if, if we think about, you know, we're all, we're all different. Mm -hmm. We all have certain strengths and weaknesses. Again, that's like good and bad. It's, it's not black and white, right? Yeah. But but some of us are much better at doing things in a certain way, maybe from a manager perspective. And mm -hmm. so how do we, how do we come to know ourselves better, especially when a lot of times there are stories around what a manager is supposed to look like, yeah. right? So your manager is not going to be the same as my manager right. or as somebody else's, right? Yep. So so how do we get to know ourselves better and then kind of embrace that part of us as who we are mm -hmm. and allow, right, the, the strength and our uniqueness to come out in that ego state? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the most important thing to remember is that all of these states are here for our higher good. They are all here to help us. Even if sometimes we go, oh, I hate when I do that, or oh, I can't believe I acted that way. You know, sometimes we get really strict with the rules. You know, we get very stubborn and we get very um, <clears throat> set in our ways. That's an ego state doing that. You know, so it sometimes it, I'm a writer down kind of thing. I'm like write it out in longhand. It's it's, it's just the way I work. Um, and I literally sat down with these cards and flip through them and went, okay, I relate to this one. I relate to this one. I relate to this one. And then I started to write about that character. I wrote about it as if I was casting a play. What are the qualities of that part of me? When does this come out? And for example, I was doing a trapeze class and one of the people that worked there decided to call me out for something and basically publicly shame me. I shut down so fast. Capricorn went protect cold, icy, don't talk to me. This is, this is Capricorn. She's very linear. Um, I shut down so fast because Capricorn went, oh, danger, danger, shut everything. You know, she immediately stepped in to protect that vulnerable little kid that felt publicly shamed as an adult. You know, I'm a 51 year old woman and I can still know what that vulnerability and that shame feels like. Capricorn's job is to make sure that doesn't happen, right? So she jumped in so fast. There was just no talking to me. I should have just left the class. I couldn't recover from it. It was big, you know? And later I sat down in that and went, okay, what happened? He said this, that triggered my this. You know, it's really just about asking the questions and sitting sometimes in that uncomfortableness of, God, why did I snap at that woman at the grocery store? What did she trigger in me? What did I see in her that made me act blah, blah, blah? Um, so sometimes it's just sitting down with yourself, closing your eyes and going, okay, when does my manager show up? Okay. Oh, at work at the PTA meeting, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes things blend. Sometimes you might think that this is actually your manager. And in reality, it's a whole separate character, which is your judge or your rule enforcer, you know, and that, that sometimes just takes a coach. I mean, this is what I do. I sit down with my clients and we analyze all this and make sure that we get to know these parts so that we can man manage our parts and call them up when we need to. And the best place to come from, and you actually sort of said this, is self. And self is that place where we sit with no ego state on. It is calm, courageous, curious, connected. It's that place when we just came out of a meditation or we do breath work. That is the most beautiful place that we can be because as soon as we see an ego state coming on, oh, geez, here comes Capricorn to protect me from that gut. That's us sitting in self and recognizing that that state is coming on. So the more we can stay in self, the better we're going to get to know our ego states, the better we can shift them, the better we can make those decisions and be less reactive and more responsive to things. Well, and I guess too, you know, it's, it's because there's, there's probably kind of like the, 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 the razor's edge of trying to train, maybe kind of train your ego state versus accepting it as it is right because i know you you were you were show you know holding up several different cards that were images that could be could resonate with someone as that oh that's my manager mm -hmm. right like the person with the the bullhorn who's yep. up on a pedestal kind of yelling at people right yep. some of you that may be you know more what your natural 
manage your ego state is because mm -hmm. of whatever you've done right now you might like it you might not like it right and and so i'm guessing too there's probably this razor's edge of do i tone that guy down a little bit or do i accept that well no that's who i am and for whatever reason the way i do things like that mm -hmm. is exactly the way it should be kind of from a self-grace perspective right but realizing, you know, as well, it's like, okay, if you've got more of an asshole kind of a manager state, <laughs> then you're ne going to need to be careful about when he or she shows up, yep. right? It might be very effective at getting done what needs to get done in the short term, mm -hmm. but you don't want to stay in that state for very long. Right. Sure. I mean, like I said, sometimes I absolutely need Capricorn. Um, you know, she's there to get stuff done. Um, I was in a taxi in Vegas and talking to the guy and he said, what do you do? I was there for the hypnotherapy conference and he's on it. So I don't need that kind of stuff. And he was so, he was very abrasive and he was very, I don't need anybody's help. I've got everything figured out. He was very this, he was still fighting the war. And he had thrown up such armor. And I'm just sort of sitting in self watching this unfold go, wow, this is fascinating. He was so defensive of nothing. I mean, we were just having a casual conversation, but he led with, let me show you how strong I am. Let me show you how I don't need people. Let me show you. So he was stuck in this ego state of defensiveness of let me show you how strong I am. And it turned out he was a vet. And I don't know what he saw where he served, but he was still, he was still in that tank. Um, and it was just so interesting to watch that that was the, the ego state he led with, even with a complete stranger in his taxi. And so it's like, now I can see people's states and I can see them switch states. And I can look at that from the, you know, coaching self perspective and go, wow, that's fascinating. And it's like, I wanted to sit, can I, can I just have an hour? I'm not even going to charge you. <laughs> can like, I just, I just want to I just want to talk to you for an hour. It was so interesting. So we all have a state we lead with. You know, some people just do lead with a jester. You know, and we all have that friend where we're like, oh my God, Joe is on all the time. Like, why is he always performing? That's just the ego state he leads with. It's the Chandler Bing syndrome. You know, that's his, that's how he relates to people. That's his defense mechanism. That's how he covers up stress or uncomfortableness. It's the class clown thing, you know? So we all have something we lead with. It's a matter of getting to know those and if they get out excuse me out of control how do we figure out what they need so they can be reined in a little bit yeah because as you were talking about the the taxi driver that's what i was thinking is you know this is one of the beautiful things about this is the better that we understand our own ego states we can start to recognize them in other people as well yeah. and, ha and have some compassion for them or yep you know, to, to also, you know, if you're, if you're managing or leading people, the same thing, right. Is, you know, you know, Joe is in his, in his joking gesture, but it's like, Joe, we got to get some shit done here. Right. It's like, you know, in, in, in being able to kind of, you know, lead Joe back to, all right, you know, for the next 15 minutes, we need to, you know, kind of rein it in and focus on this after 15 minutes, we're going to go back. But yeah. right now, right, we got to have this other with this other state show up. Absolutely. So we can accomplish what we got to do. And we can do that in ourselves, too. You know, we talk to ourselves all the time. We have a constant dialogue running. And so there are nights where I wake up in the middle of the night and Capricorn goes, oh, hey, remember tomorrow you have to do. And I go, oh, crap. So she's up <laughs> in the middle of the night and deciding it's time to do the to do list. 2 a.m. is not the time to do the to-do list. I have biological parts that really need to sleep. And so I actually will say that to her. And yes, I say her as if I'm talking to multiple people because that's what this is. Um, I'll say, look, I so appreciate you telling me and reminding you know, the, us that we have to do that. We need to sleep now. So how about I promise you that first thing in the morning, we're gonna get to that. Do you need me to write it down? I'll write it down. Do you, you know? And eventually she goes, oh, okay. And I fall back to sleep, typically in the middle of that conversation. And I've done this with clients where they go, um, does that mean I'm just sitting there talking to myself? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're talking to yourself anyway, right? And so, so again, right. I mean, that's, that's a great example of, you know, and, and it's a way of self-talk too, right? As, as far yep. as when Capricorn shows back up, it's like, you know what? 2 a.m. is not the time to remind me. I want to listen to you, but right now I need to go to sleep remind me about that at 7 30 in the morning yeah 
just remind me about it at 7 30 in the morning okay. now when you say that to yourself again subconsciously what do you think you're going to think about at 7 30 in the morning yep you've already said i'm going to deal with it at that point right i've even started telling myself you know when when, when you start worrying about something you know and it's like you know I don't have time to worry about this right now. I'm going to take care of it and set a time, uh -huh. right? I will take care of this, Nick. Thank you for reminding me. Yep. I will take care of that next week. Yep. Right. And then just kind of let it go. Uh -huh. And it is, I mean, like you said, you know, we're, we're it's, this is going to sound like we're crazy folks, but we're not crazy. But just like Kathy said, we are talking to ourselves all the time. You're not crazy if you're talking to yourself because we do it all the time. So why yeah. not actually use the tools or learn how to talk yep. to ourselves in a better way yep. so we can be more productive? You're talking Absolutely. to yourself anyway. Right. Absolutely. Well, and so often, how, how often have we said, God, you know, part of me really wants to leave this relationship and another part of me is like, ah, I should probably stay. We say things like that all the time. God, part of me wants ice cream for dinner. Another part of me is like, look, you gained some weight. You promised you weren't going to do that. The, we talk about parts all the time. I hear clients all the time say that to me. Yeah, part of me wants to go on vacation. Another part of me is really scared about COVID. We have this parts conflict all the time. And you brought up that anxious part. So I had actually pulled this card already. I love this card. She is freaking the fuck out. And I have several clients who have picked this as something they relate to. And they go, what is, what good does she serve? Like, what purpose is this? And I said, she's going to tell you everything that can possibly go wrong to protect you from it. Mm -hmm. That's her job. And I have found that when Capricorn fails, when she can't control everything, I flip into that. Doesn't happen very often, but, you know, states also lead to other states. You know, so that's another important thing to talk about. We don't have time to do that today. Anyway, so get to know your manager, figure out what their name is, what they want to be called, not what your other part wants to call them. What are their traits? What are they there for? What are they afraid of if they're not doing their job anymore? And just start to get to relate to those parts of yourselves. And if you need help, call me because I can help you with that. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, as you were talking about that with, you know, the, the freaking the fuck out card kind of thing, it, it reminded me there's a commercial on i think it's zello or but but it's effectively this lady walks into a conference room talks to different parts of herself talks to different parts of herself right and so so you know if you think about it, it's like every every one of these ego states has a purpose yep now sometimes you you don't want to listen to pessimistic jason right but maybe pessimistic jason has something valid to offer right and so if you think about it not necessarily like the ego states are controlling or driving you but you're using them as if you would use a boardroom yep. full of experts absolutely you know? jester jason what do you think about that i think right. that's a great idea right pessimistic <laughs> are you kidding me right yeah <laughs> That's it was right on top. Yeah, it's pessimistic, <laughs> you know, Jason. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you, um, you know, but but get the input, and then show up the way you need to make make the decision. I, I think that commercial actually, it's kind of brilliant in yeah. in bringing that in more from a visual yep. standpoint of of what we're really kind of doing here. Yeah. And the first time I saw the commercial, I actually turned to my boyfriend and went, oh, "It's Ego States!" I was so yeah. excited. Because I talk about, I mean, this is what I do primarily with all of my clients now. At some point, we pull out these cards and end up talking about ego states because that's just the best way to manage situations that are happening. It's it's so good to know that, to know yourself, and then it helps you in your relationships, at work, at home. You know, I've started, there's one couple that I've started doing ego state work with both of them in the couple. It's phenomenal because then you get to know each other's states, what triggers what. It's just, I love this system. It's just one of my favorite things, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, oh, which means yeah. we're probably going to talk about it again too, yeah. because it is, it's, it's an important thing because again, you know, like you said, I think a lot of people are afraid of talking to themselves. They're afraid of realizing that there's different parts of them that are a mm -hmm. little bit different yeah. and it kind of freaks them out, but it's, it's perfectly normal. Yeah. It's just learning how to manage and, you know, learning how to know yourself better so that you can use all of you to be uniquely you yeah. and bring to this world what only you can bring to this world. Yeah. Yay. So. 
yeah, know thyself. It's just, you know, it just goes back centuries. Mm -hmm. Centuries? Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Well, I, I'm going to give a different website this time. I'm Kathy Groover. I can be reached at kathygroover.coach. Dot coach. Ooh, you have a new website. I'll have to go check that out. Yeah. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can still be reached at <laughs> jasonmefford.com. Uh, so with that, go out, you know, just get to know yourself better and uh, realize you're not crazy um, in, in doing some of this work, but it, it really will make your life a lot better uh, when you can, can get to know yourself better and show up the way you need to in any given situation. So have a great rest of your week and we'll catch you on the next episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. See ya. See ya.